Okay, so with that, we're now going to take questions which have been held uh, up until now, but um, we have the opportunity for anybody who wants to ask a question with regard to our first topic of any of our panelists here, uh, fire away. I think over Zoom, we have our first question already. So whether you want to uh, fire that away. Um, so Dr. Stuart Wong mentioned that he's working with different materials to improve performance. Can you elaborate on this a little bit? Sure. Uh, so wood chips are closer to the mic. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, we're looking at different types of uh, wood chips uh, to see if some work better than other. So that's an experiment we have going on in our uh, trailer, our, our uh, sort of work, of wastewater research and innovation facility. Uh, and we're, I don't want to name any numbers yet because the results aren't all in, uh, but that was promised. Uh, and then another technology uh, that would help a lot. Um, we've done some experiments at the work which show that additions of 10% of silt to sand uh, actually create a, more of a surface area for denitrifying bacteria. Uh, and so we're, uh, we think that 10% additions will not slow the perg rates down to levels that are below uh, uh, New York state standards. So we think we can do that. And we're actually looking uh, at a couple installations where we add that. So um, the uh, George Hoyfelder and his group at the Massachusetts um, Alternate Septic System Test Center have had a silt system in place uh, for uh, six years, uh, which is it's an unlined system. So it's not saturated. But the addition of that silt has generated numbers that are around eight uh, milligrams per liter. Uh, it's loaded slightly lower than our systems here at about 0.65, 75 gallons per square foot per day. But I think it holds a lot of promise. Thanks for your question. Okay, let's take uh, any questions in the room. So uh, last time we were here, the concept of uh, wood chips came up, and I really like that idea. It's simple. I just had a couple of questions. Uh, the type of wood chips are they hardwood or they uh, fine slow wood type chips? Uh, also, the PFAS is it uh, is it a biological breakdown or does it uh, is it absorbed into the chips? Because uh, that would be a concern with disposal at a later. Understood, yes. So, other than PFAS, the drinking water group that uh, measures PFAS has uh, told me that their process, that the uh, removal is biological in the NRPs. And that's a very important question uh, because if it's absorption, then you only have a limited amount of time. In terms of the wound, Uh, so that's on one for dioxane on the PFAS that you referred to earlier. Um, those were not, uh, we haven't investigated that to my knowledge as to the removal of PFAS in, uh, in uh, NRBs. Uh, yeah, those are different. On the wood chips, uh, it's actually very difficult to get wood chips that are pure. Um, I ended up for this experiment getting wood chips that are pure by specifically having a tree cutter cut down certain trees and shipping them. So we'll see uh, whether uh, they do one type does better than another. Thanks. So, so I just want to add a note that EPA through an internal competition where we're looking to, to look at the removal potential for Contaminants of emerging concern, and one of those is PFAS um, for the, some of these um, biological uh, nitrogen, black, whatever. <laughs> and and really that. Yeah, and our 
Uh, from what we can make out from the presenters, on site treatment can outperform centralized wastewater treatment and on site treatment to recharge the aquifer as opposed to pushing the water out to sea. Why then is there so much money and effort going into waste centralized wastewater treatment? Yes, yeah, so uh, just an uh, observation with regard to the second part of the question and uh, surface water discharge versus groundwater recharge. I think that most of the surface water discharge facilities are probably older, and that any uh, proposal for reducing the treatment, including the groundwater recharge, would be the case at the Fort Bridger Fund, set the record straight for that. I think that the financial realities are points that are going to point people in, in the direction of um, decentralized wastewater. We know that uh, sewers are not a cost effective solution in much of Suffolk County. That's why the sub watershed wastewater plan is proposing $4 billion in investment, totaling to 75% or $3 billion of that to be invested in IA systems uh, throughout this county. And then, relatively, um, you know, relatively small amount of funding being invested in sewer, but for the most part, to get at the parcels that are in close proximity to existing treatment works. So the, the major emphasis is not for the sewer. The major emphasis is for decentralized systems, 75% decentralized things. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, based on the recent studies where you're finding impacts of hydrogen and drinking water to have an impact on health, oh, are there complete considerations of the limits of hydrogen and drinking water? Uh, not that I'm aware of. So that's the 10 milligrams per liter is a EPA drinking water standard. I I would not really be in a position to know if that's being reevaluated or looked at at a national level. Um, I'm not aware of anything at the moment. I think in the interest of in the interest of getting us back on schedule. We're going to wrap up this first session. So before we do that, let's thank our speakers and the panel.